find and call a function in JavaScript. Okay, so we can say we can have a lot of function inside JavaScript. So how to define and call JavaScript is a very crucial for future projects. So how to define a function is very simple by calling the keyword function and with this function we need to have a name for the function but we can have an anonymous function or self invoke function but for now we're gonna start with function with a name so the name of the function is say hello and then we'll have our two round brackets right in front of it we've been using functions but this is where we i'm taking you to functions itself so the function keyword and then the name of the function then we'll have a round bracket and then a two curly bracket after the round bracket that is a definition of a function then we can simply write something inside so if we use uh if we use uh document dot write now we get something inside the function for example we can have a string to say welcome here okay so this is a full function that we have now now if we want the function to actually show on the screen now nothing is showing on the screen so the next one will be called the function declaration. That means we need to do that outside of the curly bracket. So simple, we call calling a function. So and to call a function is very simple. We just copy the name here with the run brackets. That means we have called the function and then this will display what we got inside the function which means which says welcome here okay so what if we want to do add parameters to a function so adding parameters to a function okay so To add a parameter to a function, parameter is simply what we put in here and inside here. Those are called parameters. Okay, so how do these things work? Let's look at it. Let's use an example to understand. So let's say, let's say display display sum so we're gonna try to add some two numbers with this function and we'll have a num1 and then num2 those are called the parameters okay and in here in here we'll have a variable let's say total since we want to do a sum so we want to use so meaningful variables send we cause these two parameters we have here very simple here but in here will be a plus to help us add those parameters we'll be passing to then we'll call this variable here without quotes inside okay now we have to call this function but when we call this function with the parameters like this here just like how we did the call in the function here we need to provide a value which will be will be for num1 so for example 5 is for num1 and then 23 is for num2 so it simply means we call the function and then we pass real values to these placeholders and then these placeholders will perform an addition calculation here and then display the result to us so let's check this on the screen so we have 28 there because 23 plus 5 will give us a 28 okay that is really cool right 
we can do a lot with functions but let's look at uh let's look at passing argument to a function so we're passing arguments to a function so we will say let's have another function name i mean we want we just want the name to be meaningful to the examples let's say show show full name that's the name of the function and here we'll have our argument the first one is first name first name and then this one will be last name so just like the parameters then here instead to have the addition here we don't need it but we need to we need to have this argument right here inside the round bracket and we'll convert this that is by concatenating having some space in there okay all right so now calling this function the first name and the last name we're gonna pass it the same way we pass the numbers in here so instead of the first name we need to have a name there but this is a string so it needs to be in an in a quote so let's say mary here and here another quote and let's say john here so mary mary john okay so for it to be a little bit meaningful let's add something close to close to a second name okay everybody knows mary is a first name so let's look at this side now we have mary awura which means what we passed here this one goes to this side and this one goes to that side and then it returns the first name and the second name with a space in between these two here so this is how we pass argument in javascript let's look at let's look at how to return 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 a value a value from a function okay so to return a value from a function is basically the same as what we did first what we did first in an example right let me paste this and then copy this real quick okay so i just want to revert real quick to the sum function we had and we're gonna use that one for the example so we say this display numbers and then we have document dot write which is total instead to use this document dot write we can simply use a return keyword and that is going to also print out what we use for the document dot write the same thing that it's gonna do for us so this is how we do return so it, let me see so we have num display sum total num plus one return and then displaying the value we need to oh here to display the value we need to now bring the document here so to display on the screen we need to have the document dot right so we have the document dot right in here then we'll have the name of this inside
this way then we'll have the name here so this is how it works then we get a 28 there so this is how we return values we pass the value outside and then this perform it function outside the what the function we just wrote but let's see how to return multiple values now we've returned only one value but let's see how we can return multiple values okay from a function so so with the same mm, let's say we have an example of this one uh, multiple values so let's say we have we have dividend here then we have divisor here okay then we'll have a variable of a quotient so we want to demonstrate multiple quotient and the quotient will be equal to the dividend divided by divisor which is this okay then we'll have an array so let's say we have an array so this is just a variable and then we we'll have have dividend divisor and then a quotient here because a quotient is actually a, divid a dividend over divisor which gives you quotient and then we have div dividend and then divisor part of what we are returning so instead to return total we return an array so these are multiple returns from this function so let's say we want to return all the value we'll simply do let all what we are returning be equal to be equal to the name of the function and we'll put in some value here so let's say 10 and then 20, uh, 2 for the divisor so we have 10 for the dividend and then we have 2 for the divisor there then now we have to mm, we have to now write this on the screen so instead to use the sum here we can simply use the all variable here which is this and then we define which of the indexes do we want to display on the screen so we use the square bracket so we say the first one will be zero inside the area which is dividend and when we load dividend is actually 10 here but what if we want to display for example let me copy and paste this since we are using the index one okay so we want to display everything on there so here we'll have the first will be zero which is zero is equal to 10 the zero index then one is two then the quotient is 10 over 2 which is this one here then it gives us 5 so this is how we can you know return multiple values from a function
and let's look at function expressions so function expressions okay so we gonna use we just have to have uh, define functions using a variable for example we want to have a function name of probably get some instead to have a function name we'll use the variable instead to be equal to an anonymous function so let's say we have a function and then we have the parameters here so num1 and then we have num2 in here okay then we have the same let total which is equal to the num1 num2 we got here here okay and then we have to return the total okay. then here we're gonna have print what we get here so document the right and then we have our get this here so get anonymous function without that. Then we replace the norm with it and the number here. So great. So this is function expression because we are using kind of a variable to hold a whole function and then now call the function using the variable here and then passing the parameters or argument in there that is function expression so let's see what we can do with declaration versus function expression so we learned the function declaration and now we've learned the function expression okay <clears throat> so let's say we have this as a function declaration so i move down here a little bit now let's add a function declaration so for example we're gonna have mm, we're gonna have a function declaration here and with this function i'm gonna name it uh declaration okay Declaration and have the round bracket. Then, in in here, we want to print something to the screen. Then we'll say we want to print a string. So inside a quote, then we say uh, this is function declaration. Okay then we'll have the function expression so so instead to do this we want to have expression we want to use expression for this so it comes out really clear to us this one we will not be having just for demonstration purpose so we'll keep it very simple so function declaration and function for expression so these are the two different ways we can declare functions okay so we clear this one here now we have function declaration and we have function expression and to call this one is very simple if we want to display what we got inside a function declaration we can easily call the declaration right on top and then here we can simply call 
the variable which is expression and then add two round bracket to it and then we terminate this then we have these two functions working so we have this is function declaration okay then we can have We can have the let me say this oh, function mm, uh, let me see oh we're gonna have an error for this we're gonna have an error for this one let me see at the console area yes we're going to have a reference error and cannot access expression before what initialization so we need to bring this down and then run it again so you see for the function declaration we were able to call the function right on top of it but for the function expression we need to call the function uh, below the whole expression so I mean that is that is expression and then declaration of function for you so this is what we got here all right so you can easily use any of them in your project now let's look at the javascript local variables so local variables okay so let's say we want to declare a simple function we can use the function declaration the same for the example but let's see say we want to use the same example for what we're about to do but we'll have a variable let's say we have let's greet somebody what's this by assigning a string to that it's just tweaking it a little bit we can use what we have here but then we say hello so i can call this variable and it's basically the same if i don't call the variable i can write it in here it's the same okay so we got hello there now we want to access this greeting in another let's say the declaration in another document or right what will happen is it's gonna actually display an error so this variable here cannot access outside of the function but it can access inside these confined blocks so if i want to if i want to access this variable inside here it won't let me so great it won't let me because this is outside of the function blocks so i cannot access this variable in here can only use this variable inside the same function so for example if i run this i'm gonna get a grid is not defined which means it's outside of what of the function so you cannot access it here unless we access it inside the what the function block so that is what is term the local variable so let's say we have we want a one which we can access outside it that one we use what we call the global variable okay so for the global variable is very simple it's just the same just our the difference is 
we have to define this on top of the function but outside the blocks just needs to be outside the block of this function so the same function with the same variable being called but we declare that on top of it so that means we can access this same variable outside of it what of it function so for example i can write document dot write and access this variable grid here okay so now we have hello for calling this same variable from this function and then we declare it here this variable can apply and work inside the function which is grid and can also work outside the function which is grid so this is this is actually called what a global what global variable then the other one we did which was inside so if it is inside here then it's a local variable if it comes out up here then it's a global variable 